What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Not a video, a live. I'm already caught up in the mix of creating my content on YouTube, guys. Sorry about that. But for everyone that's tuned in so far, go ahead and drop a comment down below and go ahead and let me know where you guys are watching from. Go ahead and comment your city. Go ahead and comment your state and interact with me, guys. I greatly appreciate when you guys go ahead and comment, whether they're questions, whether it's just, you know, replying back to me. It helps out with the algorithm, and at the end of the day, it shows me that you guys are appreciative of these lives, and you guys, of course, enjoy these lives, guys. What it's all about, it's about dropping value. It's about giving you guys as much information as I possibly can to help you guys start your ATM business or even just learn a little bit more about entrepreneurship. So for everyone watching right now, can you guys go ahead and do me a favor? Go ahead and comment down below real quick where you guys are watching from, city, state, let me know where you guys are watching from, and I'll go ahead and shout some of you guys out in the meantime. Also, for everyone that's watching, today is going to be a pretty quick life uh, training today, guys. We are not going to uh, take too much time tonight. Uh, usually, our lives always take about an hour. Uh, I'm going to try to make it quick for you guys. I know that some of you guys have to, you know, you're, you're currently at, still at work or you're at home, you know, trying to be with the family, getting ready for dinner. So the last thing I want to do is take too much of your guys' time. So while you guys are commenting right now, what city and state you guys are watching from, let me go ahead and start with today's agenda. Now, tonight, guys, we are going to be talking about three, two different topics, and then we're going to move into our Q&A as always. Reasons why I like to have a QA and a is just I like to talk to you guys, get to answer some of your guys' questions, and ultimately give you guys as much value as possible. The last thing I want is for you guys to leave this live and still have some questions. So for everyone that has any questions, Feel free to save them for the end as we will have a Q&A. But for tonight's agenda, guys, we are going to be talking about the three different ways on how to make money within the ATM business. That's right, guys. There's multiple ways on making money when it comes to the ATM business. And then we're also going to talk about the four pillars on how to start your ATM business. And last but not least, guys, we're going to go over a Q&A. We're going to go ahead and go back and forth, guys. You guys will be able to ask me whatever you guys want. But let's go ahead and get started, guys. Now, real quick, for everyone that does not know me, uh, that is new to my Facebook group, hi, guys. My name is Juan Geronimo. I am currently 25 years old, and I am located in Texas. I currently own over 20 ATMs all over Texas, currently generating me passive income, guys. What I've pretty much put together with this group is I got all of my experience. I put it into this group so you guys can leverage all of the information and ultimately start your ATM business. Whenever I started my business, guys, there was no one out there doing pretty much what I'm currently doing and what other guys are doing out here right now, which is helping people with free information with groups like this, where you guys will be able to network, interact with each other. So that's one of my goals that I had whenever I started my business was, you know, create something that I didn't have that I wish I had whenever I started this business. So that's exactly why I started this group. And this is exactly why I'm dropping a bunch of value for you guys, for everyone watching. Thank you guys for joining. But I'm currently um, 25 years old in Texas with 28 over 20 ATMs currently on location. Guys, I actually just got back from installing one of my ATMs. I had an install at a barber shop. Currently, this barber shop has about 15 plus barbers inside of that location. And I've been dealing with that uh, barbershop install probably for like the last two to three hours. That's why, unfortunately, I had to postpone the life. Um, we were dealing with uh, the business owner needing a enclosure, security enclosure for the ATM, which I delivered and everything. But they were just a little bit confused and I had to talk to them and get the everything situated. So that's the reason why I took a little longer. But that location, guys, a 15 barber, uh, barber, you know, barbershop. That is going to be a potential, I don't want to say gold mine. I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but it will be a great location. I was excited to get that ATM installed, and that's the reason why I did everything in my power to try to get that location uh, locked down, guys. But, yes, I did get a location um, installed today, and uh, hopefully, you know, we keep growing and as well as help you guys do the exact same thing. But with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and move into the agenda because, like I said, I don't want to take too much of your guys' time. So number one, guys, the agenda for tonight is going to be the three different ways on how you can actually make money with the ATM business. Now, yes, guys, there's three ways. If not, there's even more, a couple more ways. But the most important, if not the most common ways on how to generate income with ATMs is 
Number one, the basic standard way of you know making money with ATMs, generating passive income with ATMs, buying the ATM, throwing it inside of a location, whether it's a barbershop, nail salon, and filling it up with cash, and that's how you generate passive income. Ultimately, what you're doing is you're putting your money to work. You're buying an asset, you're filling it up with your cash, and you're recycling that cash and letting that cash work for you. That would be step number one. That right there is the most common way to generate passive income with the ATMs. A lot of ATM business owners always use this method, which is owning the ATM and filling it up with your own cash, whether it's your cash or your loan that you're, you're getting from the bank, whatever the case may be, but you are fulfilling that ATM 100% on your own. That is the most common way to do it. And the reason why is the most common way to do it is because typically you're generating 100% of the profits. You're not paying... Uh, you no know, third-party service to fill up your ATM or install the ATM, whatever the case may be. Majority of the profit is going to you. Now, if you do pay the business owner a percentage per transaction, then typically it's about 25, 20 to 25%, right? Or it could be even less than that, right? I pay some of my business owners 20 cents, 25 cents, 50 cents, and then it just goes up from there depending on the location. But you always want to stay in the realm of 20%. Now, that means that you keep 80%. And the reason why you keep 80% is because a lot of the times as an ATM business owner, what you want to target is a company that's going to provide free processing where you're not going to be paying processing fees. That's what's going to allow you to generate 80% of your profits after paying the business owner their split, right? So you can get away with not paying the business owner anything and you can also pay the business owner a percentage per transaction. At the end of the day, it all depends on you. But the most common way to do it is, of course, installing the ATM, buying the ATM, having it you know, be 100% yours and using your own cash to fulfill that location. Now, typically when it comes to fulfilling locations with your own cash, it would range anywhere near one to $3,000 on average a week to fill up an ATM. Every now and then you may find yourself a great location. For example, the barbershop that I just installed a couple hours ago, they have 15 barbers inside of that barbershop. And I can project that this location is going to hit anywhere near three to $5,000 a week in cash, because of course it is going to be a high traffic location. A lot of the, a lot of the barbers are taking currently Zelle and cash out because they take cash only. And a lot of people don't have cash only. So that ATM right there, I can, predict that is going to hit anywhere near four to 500, if not 600 bucks a month, and hopefully even more than that. So it's all about, you know, letting the ATM sit there, nurture uh, with the location, allowing the clients to find out that there's an ATM. And then of course, guys, whenever I build a rapport with this location, I will come back on here on live and I will show you guys a little bit of that location and how it's performed. Um, just so you guys can see for yourself, you know, the type of location that, that it is and what it's making. So that's number one, guys, owning the actual ATM. Number two, you could buy the ATM, own it, and then have someone else fill up your ATM for you. Now, whenever you're in the ATM business, like I said in the, uh, earlier, it's always recommended and it's most common to start the ATM business and also fill up your own machine. But if you're someone that just does not have time to fill up your own, own ATM, if you're someone that, you know, you're working, uh, like one of my students says, graveyard hours, where you literally do not have any time to, you know, take the time to go out and vault your ATMs, and you would much rather have someone else do it, you can always own the ATM and have someone else fill up your ATM. Those are called third-party vaulters. Vaulters, third-party companies, um, whatever you guys want to call it. You could even hire armored truck companies like Brinks, uh, Pineda, I believe is another one. You could hire these companies to fill up your ATMs. And at the end of the day, guys, whenever you own these ATMs and you're, you're hiring someone else to fill up your ATMs, that is 100% residual income for you because now you do not even have to visit that location anymore. Now, of course, if you want to maintain a healthy relationship, which is something I do recommend, and visit the location, talk to the business owner, ask the business owner a couple questions, ultimately uh, build that, that strong relationship between you and the owner, then you do want to visit the location here and then. Um, but if you do hire a third-party vulture, a lot of the times it's straight residual. You don't have to worry about that ATM at all because the third-party company is going to vault that ATM for you. Now, that is, like I said, one of the other options if you're someone that has your hands full 
if you're someone that currently has a job that's taking the majority of your time and you don't really have much time to go out and fill up all of your ATMs, you could always hire someone to do it for you. Now, the only thing about hiring third-party vulture guys is that you do have to pay them, right? At the end of the day, nothing is free in life. You should not expect someone to go fill up your ATM with their own cash and charge you 50 cents, 75 cents per transaction because ultimately that just doesn't make sense. Their return on investment because at the end of the day, guys, in business, in entrepreneurship, what matters is the ROI, return on investment. Whenever a third-party company is going out and it's filling their ATM up for you, one of their, thing, one of their main concerns is what's the traffic looking like? What are you charging per transaction? And ultimately what they're going to do is the same thing that you do when you go out and prospect locations. They're going to put the numbers together and they're going to see if it makes sense. If it ultimately would be a great idea for them to take care of your ATM. Now, of course, if you have a high traffic location and you have a current report that your ATM is generating over 100, 150, 200 transactions a month, then they're going to be like, yeah, we'll go ahead and, and fill up your ATM. Now, when it comes to these third-party companies, guys, you should expect to pay these third-party companies anywhere near a dollar, dollar twenty-five per transaction minimum for them to fill up your ATM. That's almost fifty percent of your profits, guys. That's exactly why a lot of guys that jump into the ATM business they start on their own because right off the jump, guys, if you hire a third-party vulture, they're taking almost—I mean, I would—I would keep it in the range of thirty to thirty-five to fifty percent uh, surcharge split because they're going to fill up your ATM. So that's the reason why a lot of business owners or ATM business owners start on their own because they want to avoid that, right? Your ROI, your return on investment as the ATM business owner is going to drop because you're now paying someone else besides the business, right? So you should expect that when starting the ATM business, if that's something, if that's the route that you want to go, you should expect that your return on investment is going to drop. Typically with the ATM business, the average ATM generates anywhere near $200 to $300, $400 a month. And if you're paying someone else, you know, 35 to 50% per transaction to fill up your ATM, you should expect to make not that amount, but if not that divided by half, right? 50% of that. So that's something that you should always expect when it comes to these third-party companies. When leveraging these third-party companies, your return on investment is going to be a lot lower so let's go ahead and um take a 30 second break guys and i'll go ahead and jump into the third way on how to generate passive income and this way right here guys it is going to be probably the best and the most effective to be able to get your return on investment a lot quicker so let's get take a 30 second break and i'll be back with that third uh, way on how to make passive income with the atm business <music> All right, guys, so the third way on how to generate income, passive income with the ATM business. This way right here is usually the route that a lot of ATM business owners uh, go with when they want to scale a lot faster, when they want to just kind of dive into the business and exit quick, you know, something like something along those lines, right? I know a lot of ATM business owners currently that find locations they buy the ATM, they place it on location, and what they do is they allow the ATM to build a report. Typically, you want to let the ATM build a report from anywhere near three to six months, right? You want to be able to build a great report because at the end of the day, what you are going to do when it comes to this strategy is you need some type of proof showing that this ATM is profitable, showing that this ATM has traffic. It's doing transactions on a monthly basis, right? Because at the end of the day, what you are looking to do with this strategy, guys, is sell the business to an investor. Exactly. Yes, you want to sell the ATM business to an investor. Now, a lot of you guys may uh, may start to ask or question like, well, you know, what's if we get into the ATM business and we're going to sell our ATM business, there's really no, no way of making passive income, which is in a way 
true because whenever you're doing this strategy, guys, you're looking to scale quick. You're looking to buy an ATM, place it on location, let it build a report. And the great thing about this strategy, guys, is let's say you buy the ATM for 2,700 bucks. You're filling it up with your own cash, of course, uh, to build a report and to ultimately generate that passive income in the meantime that you're building that report. But what you want to do after that is once you build the report, guys, and you're ready to sell, whether it's one location, two locations, three locations, and have like a bundle where, of course, you're able to sell that portfolio at a lot higher price, then you want to go ahead and look for investors in your area that are not only in the ATM business, but investors in general, because at the end of the day, guys, who wouldn't like passive income? Anyone likes passive income. Anyone likes um, an actual system that's generating income, that's cash flowing, right? So if you find an investor that is willing to invest their income, their, their, their capital into a cash flowing asset, then they're going to be all for So what you want to do is once you built that report, once you found that investor, you let's, let's put it in simple numbers, right? Let's say an ATM is making you $500 a month, right? And in those five, uh, in the, out of those $500 a month in 12 months, which is one year, it is going to generate, what is that? Um, 6,000. Yeah. So 6,000. So now let's say you have a contract for, three to four years, three to four years. Now you guys do the math, 6,000 times three to four years. That is how much that ATM is going to generate for the spam of that contract. Now you've been building a report for three to six months and, and building uh, throughout that report, it's been showing a consistent cash flow of three to four, 500 bucks. That's what you're going to use whenever you start to put numbers together and ultimately sell this and uh, to sell this asset to an investor. So let's say you find an ATM business owner in the area. He's a pretty big shop. He has over a dozen machines in the in the in the area that you're in, and he's looking to buy an, a, an ATM route, which is what they call them, an ATM route, right? You have an ATM generating 500 bucks a month. You have the contract agreement for let's say three years, right? That would be. $18,000 that that ATM is going to generate over the course of that contract. If the contract is set for three years and if that ATM is generating 500 bucks a month, which you're going to build or you're going to see from that report. So what you're going to do then is you're going to find the investor. You're going to let them know, Hey, I have this ATM. It's generating me 500 bucks a month. Here are the reports showing facts, showing you that they actually, that this ATM is actually generating this amount monthly. And then you want to go ahead and tell them, I'll go ahead and sell it to you for this amount. Now, a lot of ATM business owners, they do that when they want to scale quick. Because think about it, guys. You buy an ATM for 2700 bucks. Now, if an ATM is generating you 500 bucks a month, ideally, you want to keep that ATM, right, for your own portfolio because that's a great location. But let's say, like I said, you want to scale fast, right? You want to buy that ATM. You found yourself a gold mine. Now you're going to leverage that gold mine to help you scale, to help you sell that portfolio, sell that location for a much higher cost. So then use that capital to roll it over into more ATMs and potentially start over, do the same thing. If not, build on your personal portfolio. But what you can do is you can find an investor that wants to buy that location. You let them know, hey, over the course of the three years, five years, it's going to make me anywhere near uh 18 to thirty thousand dollars. I am willing to sell you this contract for ten, fifteen thousand dollars. You know, you always want to figure out a number, usually within uh fifty percent of what the ATM is going to generate you, if not sixty percent of what it's going to generate you. Because at the end of the day, the investor knows that since it's already built a report and it's showing that it's making you five hundred bucks a month, no doubt in their mind that they know that that ATM is not going to do that anymore. So if you're going to sell them a contract for three years, that it, over the course of those three years is going to make them eighteen thousand dollars, and you're going to sell it to them for eight thousand, nine thousand, ten thousand dollars, and they know that over the course of the contract they're still going to profit eight, you know, anywhere near five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars, then an investor is going to invest and that's what investors do. They, they invest into assets and at the end of the day, it could be a risk, right? It could be a risk for them, but that's just like any other business. That's just like any other investor shark Tank, For example, who, who here watches the show shark Tank? I watch it every now and then. And in the show shark Tank, all of the sharks, Mark Cuban, uh, Kevin O'Leary, Kevin Hart, whoever's in the show, 
what they do is they're looking into these businesses, right? They're listening to what the business owner has to say. They're looking at their numbers, what they're doing. And when it comes to reports, what they're doing over the course of their journey, over the course of the last couple months. And then from the numbers that they put together, that's when they're going to go ahead and I'll give out their offer, right? If it makes sense, because although they give that business a million dollars, right? They give that business a million dollars, but they know that that business generates over a million every single year. They know that, of course, they are going to generate profit. And over the course of the business, as it grows, their equity grows, right? So that's what investors look into, right? So all they care about is that your portfolio or that asset that you're selling them is going to make them money on top of their investment. That's all they care about. So that's one way on how you can actually go about the ATM business when it comes to scaling quick. This allows you to scale quick. I know a couple ATM business owners that have used this strategy to allow them to scale their portfolio. And trust me, guys, it works out. It works. Um, I personally haven't done that, but I know that it's a very effective way to bring in a bunch of capital and roll it over to your current asset, which in this case would be ATMs or even real estate. If you want to move into a different uh, avenue when it comes to generating income, you could always do that and roll that cash flow into that asset, right? So that is the third way on how you can generate income when it comes to the ATM business. Let's do a quick recap, guys, over what we just talked about. Number one, the traditional way of the ATM of starting your ATM business, owning the ATM, filling it up with your own cash. That is the most common way. That is the common way that majority of the ATM business owners always go with is owning the ATM business, filling it up with your own cash. Because at the end of the day, you are profiting majority of the cash when it comes to this strategy. Now, number two, you buy the ATM, you own the ATM and the contract, but you hire someone else to fill up your ATM. At the end of the day, guys, whenever you do that, your profit margins do drop, but on the bright side, it is 100% residual, meaning literally, guys, you do not have to do a single thing. You don't have to literally go to the location and fill it up. You don't have to write checks. You don't have to do anything. It is 100% residual for you. That would be number two. And then number three, guys, you buy a location. You fill it up with your own cash. You let it build a report, and what you do is you now sell that asset that location that contract to an investor that is willing to pay a higher cost for that location and like i said guys you could easily turn 2700 bucks which is what the atm cost fill it up with one to three but at the end of the day that one to three thousand dollars that's still liquid cash that you currently have so that is i mean you could count it as an investment as part of your investment but in reality once you sell that location that one to three thousand dollars is going to go back into your pocket because at the end of the day that is liquid cash that you're using to recycle into your atm and ultimately have your atm filled up and dispensing cash but that would be third the third way on how to generate income is buying the asset putting it on location letting it build a report from anywhere near three to six months and once you build a decent report you can then now calculate how much you can sell this location for whether it's three times the amount of what your investment is, four times, five times the amount, depending on how much the ATM is actually generating on a monthly basis. Now, a lot of my locations, guys, they're uh, for five years. And let's say, for example, one of my locations is generating me 200 bucks, right? 200 bucks, the minimum amount, right? Let's say it's doing the minimum amount of 200 bucks over the course of the year is going to make me uh, 200 times 12 is going to be, it's going to make me 2,400 bucks, right? Over the course of five years is going to generate $12,000, right? That ATM, that ATM only costs you 2,700 bucks. Let's say it's making you the minimum amount of 200 bucks, which is usually like the bare minimum. A lot of locations do a lot better than that, but that's usually the average, the, the minimum that a lot of locations do. I have probably in my current portfolio, which is uh, which consists of over 20 ATMs, I have probably about three or four that are in the 200 plus range, right? Um, but let's say you're doing the minimum amount for, for this ATM and you have that contract for five years. Well, over the course of the five years, that ATM is going to generate you $12,000. So you invested $2,700 in the ATM. You can easily sell that contract for double 
of what your ATM costed. So ultimately, if you invested 2,700 bucks, you can sell that contract for what? Uh, 5,400 bucks and that investor is still going to benefit from that contract from that investment because they know that from your reports that, that have been built over the course of that contract, they know that they are still going to generate 12,000 bucks from that contract and they paid 5,400 bucks. So ultimately they are going to get a little bit over double what they invested, right? So at the end of the day, guys, there are investors in the market looking to buy routes all day guys there's people uh and you guys can actually go into other atm business groups there's a lot of atm business owners already waiting to buy routes they're waiting for you to build a report and all they want to do is they they want to pay you for that location and then it's it's, it's literally work that gets off of their hands by them having to go out and prospect locations building a report seeing if the atm is going to perform well they want to get rid of all of that right as a beginner, you always want to deal with that because you want to experience that. You want to be able to go see how a location performs, see what you can do to implement into a location and ultimately bring those numbers up. But some of these investors, some of these hot shots, people that have a lot of capital, people that have a lot of money sitting ready to invest, they don't want to deal with any of that, right? They don't, they're in the bigger leagues is what they call them. So they want to, all they want to do is invest and sit back and let their investment do what it got to do, right? So that's what a lot of investors do nowadays, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed those three ways on how to generate income. I hope that kind of gave you guys a little bit of an overview and a, and a, gave you guys like a, a bigger picture of the ATM business and how you can go about it besides just buying the ATM and placing that on location and making the monthly revenue from that location. Um, I hope you guys kind of understood a little bit about that. Um, we're going to go ahead and take a 30 second break guys. And we're going to go ahead and jump into the four pillars on how to start the ATM business. And right after that, we're going to jump into a Q and a where you guys will be able to ask me any questions that you guys want about the ATM business. And of course, I'm going to be able to help you guys out now for everyone watching right now. If you guys have not been sent, uh, have not been sent a guide, an ATM business guide. If we haven't sent that over to your messages, Go ahead and comment guide down below right now. That's G-U-I-D-E. Go ahead and comment guide. And we'll go ahead and send that guide over to you as soon as possible. That's for everyone that's joined this group and has not received an ATM business guide. Now, for everyone that has received an ATM business guide, we now have a funding guide available, a credit guide available. So for those of you guys that don't have the capital to get started with the ATM business, but you want to learn how you can fund this business and uh, eventually start this business by leveraging credit or by leveraging funding. Go ahead and comment funding down below and we'll go ahead and send that funding guide over to you as soon as possible. Either me or a team member will send that over to you. So go ahead and comment funding for a funding guide and go ahead and comment guide for an ATM business guide. Now I'll see you guys in 30 seconds and we'll go ahead and jump into the four pillars on how to start your ATM business. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into the four pillars on how you can start your ATM business. Now, guys, the four pillars on how you can start your ATM business are very simple. It is very simple to get started when it comes to the ATM business. At the end of the day, guys, it's like everything else. Everything seems easy. Everything sounds easy. But of course, there's a little bit of work that you have to put into it. That just comes with entrepreneurship, right? You have to be able to be willing to learn. You have to be able to be willing to implement different skills into your business. So when it comes to the ATM business, although it is a very simple business strategy, business model, there's still a little bit of work that comes with it. For example, when it comes to the ATM business, one of the most, uh, I would say, toughest pieces of the puzzle is finding a location, right? A lot of people have a hard time finding locations. So what do we as ATM business owners do? We find different ways on finding locations uh, for our portfolio. And 
with that, you get location finder services, you get call centers, you get to do whatever you want, right? Using Yelp, um, posting automated leads on online and let those leads kind of in a sense sell themselves where you don't have to take too much time and go out door to door cold call or do whatever it is that you're doing to find locations, right? At this point, now you're setting it uh, fully automated, right? So that would be one of the toughest pieces of the puzzle when it comes to the ATM business. But if you guys stick along, I'll actually give you guys a little bit of one of the resources that I've been using for my personal portfolio, as well as for all of my students. So if you guys are interested in getting started, but let's say you're not sales savvy, or let's say that you um, are afraid that you can't find a location. Don't worry. We currently have you covered. So stick along toward the end of this life and I'll give you guys a little bit more information on that. But let's go ahead and jump into the pillar number one, which is forming your company, guys. Whenever you start the ATM business, whenever you start any business in general, you always want to form a company. You always want to establish the ATM business and ultimately have a legitimate ATM business registered with the state in which you're in. Reason being is because when it comes to forming your business, banks will not work with you unless you're a legitimate business, right? Banks will not allow you to open up an account. And without a bank, you, your ATM business will not function, will not work. And that reason is because whenever we start to deposit all of those funds that are getting taken out of your account, guess where it needs to go? Into your bank account, right? So uh, whenever you start the ATM business, you need to form your company because number one, Forming an LLC, which is what you want to form as a beginner, an LLC is a limited liability company. And the reason why you want to start your LLC, number one, is to cover you and your personal assets. A limited liability is pretty much there to cover you in case you get into any lawsuit. Let's say, God forbid, someone trips on your ATM and now they want to sue you. Well, they can only go after your LLC. They can't go after you. They can't go after your personal assets, your home, your car, whatever, right? They can only go after your current LLC. So that is one of the main reasons why you need to form a company. Now, number two, you need an LLC because, like I said, banks will not work with you unless you're a legitimate ATM business, unless you show them that you're a legitimate ATM business. So you will need an LLC for those two reasons. And those are really the two main reasons why you need a company for the ATM business, which is going to bring me to step number two or pillar number two, your business bank account, right? Your business bank account. They are starting to get a little strict when it comes to the ATM business. And the reason being is because the ATM business is vulnerable to money laundering, right? So a lot of banks are actually afraid of this. Now, the three big banks that I always tell everybody not to go near are Bank of America, Chase, and Wells Fargo. These three big banks right here, guys, I know there's a lot of you guys that currently bank with this bank. I know there's a lot of you guys that currently have accounts and you've been banking with them for 10, 15 years. It doesn't matter, guys. These companies right here, once they find out that you're in the ATM business, they are going to eventually shut you down. And I'm telling you guys this from experience. I actually banked with Bank of America. And whenever I was banking with Bank of America, I was banking with them perfectly fine for probably about, I want to say like nine months. And then out of the blue, I showed up to the bank. I tried to withdraw some cash and they were like, hey, we cannot bank or we cannot um, allow your account and continue to have you bank under us. Reason being is we found out you're in the ATM business. Now, mind you guys, I told them I was in the ATM business. So the banker, the manager where I applied for the account already knew I was in the ATM business, but the higher ups didn't. But once the higher ups found out I was in the ATM business, they were like, hey, we don't work with the ATM business. We have to shut your account down. So unfortunately, I had to get my account shut down. And this was during the weekend. So I had to leave some of my ATMs out of service, which was ultimately a pain in the behind so what i had to do was i had to find another bank banks that you guys want to always target are small banks credit unions these are the type of banks that you always want to go with there's a lot of small local banks in your area so i would highly recommend you guys to do your due diligence when it comes to the banks and ultimately ask them before you go in there and try to lock a location or a bank a bank account down always call them and ask hey what do you guys require when it comes to setting up an account, I'm in the ATM business. I'm just calling to see if you guys can help me open up a business bank account for my ATM business. Right off the jump, guys, they're going to let you know whether they can work with you or whether they don't. And also, if they can work with you, ask them if there's any requirements because sometimes banks require a location agreement. Sometimes they tell you, hey, I can set you up with an account, 
but I need to have a physical contract between you and a business that you guys are actually working together. And some of the reasons why they do this is because a lot of banks send one of their reps out and they go out and actually visit the location and make sure that you're a legitimate ATM business. So that's what a lot of banks do. And that's the reason why they ask for location agreements. So for those of you guys that are wanna that want to go ahead and jump into the ATM business, highly recommend you guys to start looking for locations early. Even though you're not in the business already, highly recommend you guys to start looking for locations because trust me, whenever you start getting that bank account set up, whenever you start forming your company, it's always great to have a couple leads on the side ready to go. That way, by the time you're established, you're ready to start cold calling. You're ready to start visiting some of these locations and talking to some of these business owners. So bank, uh, bank account would be step number two or pillar number two. Number three, guys. Three is going to be processing. Now, how many of you guys here know about processing? Go ahead and comment down below. Go ahead and give me a little hands up emoji. Go ahead and say me. Go ahead and interact with me, guys. I greatly appreciate when you guys comment. It helps out with the algorithm. But how many of you guys here know about processing? Now, there's a lot of processing companies out there that take advantage of newcomers. And this is the reason why I created this group and why I jump on these lives. Because there's a lot of guys out there and even current students of mine that started the business before they reached out to me, they currently signed up with a processing company that is charging them, shoot, 10, 15, 25 cents per transaction for processing. Now, number one, guys, you always want to avoid a company that charges for processing. There are a lot of companies out there that do free processing. One thing you always want to go for is free processing, no contract, meaning this company will not tie you up under a contract and unlimited processing, meaning you're able to scale your portfolio to 20, 30 machines if you'd want, and they're not going to switch up the arrangement, the agreement with you, right? They're always going to give you that free and limited processing. That is what you want to target. Like I said, guys, I currently have students. I currently have a lot of people that message me and like, hey, I started working with this company and now they're trying to charge me 10 cents. And I signed a contract, so now I'm stuck with them for the next five years. So you always want to make sure that you avoid these things because although some companies give you, you know, deals where they almost sound too good to be true, eventually if they sign you, they made you sign a contract, there's something in that contract or they pull something out of the blue under their sleeve where they're like, hey, we have to start charging you. We changed our policy. And guess what? Now that you're in a contract, there's no way for you to get out of that unless you pay yourself out of that contract. So always target free unlimited processing as that's going to be pillar number three. Number four, guys, location. Location, 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 guys. Location when it comes to the ATM business is the most important piece of the puzzle because without a location, of course, you're not making no income. Without a location, you don't have nowhere to place your ATM. So location is one of the most important pieces of the puzzle. And when it comes to locations, when it comes to prospecting locations in general, guys, you always want to target high traffic locations as well as uh, cash driven locations, meaning locations that take tips, locations that, you know, charge 20, 30 bucks, haircut, uh, haircut, barbershops, nail salons, you know, like I said, guys, I just installed a barbershop, uh, an ATM at a barbershop. They have 15 barbers and every single barber in there is taking cash out Brazil. Now, as you guys know, Cash App and Zelle, they're going to start uh, making you pay taxes on that income, right? They're going to start making these business owners pay taxes. So a lot of business owners, believe it or not, would prefer cash. Now, the reason why they prefer cash is because not only do they avoid fees from these credit card machines, but they also get to report what they want, right? Although that ain't, that ain't, that ain't uh, something that I would recommend. I always recommend playing by the books, but... A lot of business owners, the reason why they like cash is because, you know, they could report a little less, right? Um, you didn't hear it from me. But that's the reason why they want an ATM, right? So this barbershop that I'm currently working with, they have 15 barbers. And out of those 15 barbers, majority of them take cash. So now that my ATM is going to be there, I can talk to the, biz the business owner or even the barbers and say, hey, try to offer your clients a cash discount where... Instead of a $40 haircut, it's a $45 haircut, whatever. You know, market price up, but then whenever you implement that discount, they're pretty much paying the same thing, right? So have a strategy that you can talk to with the business owners, with the location in general, 
That way, not only it helps out when it comes to your ATM, it helps out with improving transactions with foot traffic, but it's a win-win for everyone, right? Let's say, for example, you have a barber shop that's charging $40, $50 for a haircut. Tell the barber, hey, have a cash discount program, have a cash discount offer where you tell your client, hey, if you pay me in cash, I'll give you a $5 discount. Guess what? My ATM is charging them $3, $3.50. So right off the jump, the, the barber is benefiting from a cash only transaction. I'm benefiting from the ATM transaction. And then the bit, the client is also benefiting because instead of paying $5 more, they're only paying $3 from the ATM fee. So at the end of the day, guys, it is a win, win, win when it comes to these locations. So when it comes to prospecting locations, high traffic, cash driven, but then there's things here and there that you can implement strategies that you can talk to these business owners about and ultimately help improve your transactions when it comes to your ATMs. There's a lot of guys that jump into this business and they deal with the location and the location is generating them 100, 150, $200. And they're like, ah, that's a bad location. I need to find a new one. But what they don't know is that a lot of these businesses they don't push their clients to the ATM. Your ATM is just there. But if you start to build a relationship, if you start to offer them different strategies and ultimately have these business owners, have these um, employees start pushing the clients to the ATM, not only is it going to help improve your ATM transactions, but of course it's going to help improve their business when it comes to more cash transactions. So you guys always, as an ATM business owner, want to... I mean, in a sense, help yourself out. And by helping yourself out, you always want to come up with different ways to improve that foot traffic, improve the amount of transactions that your ATM is doing. So don't just go in a location, install an ATM, and if it's doing 150 bucks, 200 bucks, it's considered a bad location, especially if you haven't put cash only signs. You know, you have to throw in different things here and there when it comes to your business to, to improve traffic, to improve these transactions. At the end of the day, guys, if you go in there and you just place your ATM and you just sit back and you don't even put a cash only sign, you don't even tell the business owner, hey, add a tip jar. You don't even tell the business owner to put a cash prefer sign on their on their location. Then the ATM transactions are never going to improve because you are not actually trying to improve it, right? So there's different things. There's different strategies that you can implement into your locations to help improve transactions. For example, I currently have a mentor, right? My mentor installed the location, an ATM at a nail salon. That nail salon was making him $150 a month. And ultimately, that is considered a below average location. So what my mentor did was he started implementing cash only signs. He started putting in a little tip jar. He started putting in uh, little signs that say cash preferred. If you pay with cash, you help our small business. If you pay with cash, it helps our business by avoiding paying these banks a uh, three, four, five percent fee. So a lot of customers, especially uh, that walk into these small businesses or walk into businesses that they support in general, if they see a sign where the sign says, "Hey, if you pay in cash, it helps out our business." Right off the jump, these business, these clients are already supporting the business. And if there's a sign that says, hey, if you pay with cash, it's going to support me a lot more. Guess what they're going to do? So, like they're going to automatically be like, oh, I'll, I'm supporting you. I like the business. I'll go ahead and pay in cash. That is going to help improve these cash, uh, these transactions when it comes to your ATM. That is going to help improve cash transactions when it comes to the business, guys. So at the end of the day, when it comes to locations, don't get demotivated when you find a bad location because at the end of the day there's always different strategies that you can improve uh, or implement to improve that location guys so that is pillar number four so give you guys a little quick recap number one you need to form your company number two you need to set up your business bank account number three you need to set up your processing company deal find a company that you are willing to work with remember free uh, free processing, unlimited processing, and no contract. And last but not least, guys, location. Location is key. And without a location, your ATM, of course, will not make you no money. So I hope you guys enjoyed the four pillars. Now it is time for a Q&A. If you guys are excited for the Q&A, go ahead and comment Q&A. And also go ahead and start getting your questions ready, guys. Go ahead and start getting your questions ready. 
because I got about five to 10 minutes for you guys to ask some questions. And of course, I'm going to be here to help you guys out. So let me go ahead and give you guys 30 seconds and then we'll go ahead and jump into a Q&A. guys let's go ahead and jump into a Q&A who here has some questions guys go ahead and comment your questions down below now I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys probably a minute to ask some questions if you guys don't have any questions no worries um I do I am live on YouTube as well so let me go ahead and check my chat on YouTube see if they go ahead and comment any questions I got a question already roll Roland Gonzalez, how are you covered as far as if the ATM gets broken into? So you as an ATM business owner could actually get insurance for your ATM. Now, insurance, I do got a company that I can refer over to you, but as when it comes to coverage, insurance is always the way to go. There's a lot of ATM business owners that rely on their bolts, rely on the security that the current business has so they don't have insurance. So at the end of the day, it's up to you as the ATM business owner, but you can get insurance for the ATMs. Do you recommend finding a location first or starting your LLC? I always recommend doing them both at the same time. So as you're applying for your LLC, as you're getting your EIN, as you're setting up your business bank account, I would also recommend you prospecting locations at the same time. So whenever you're driving, you know, living your day by day life, going to work, coming from work, whatever you're doing. As you're driving around, keep an eye out for some locations in your area and ultimately generate that list. Once you generate that list, you want to go ahead and start, you know, cold calling, prospecting, doing door to door and locking these locations under contract. So, yeah, I always recommend doing them both at the same time. Um, you could always do it before, but your LLC, your EIN, your bank account, that takes probably no more than a week or two weeks. Um, you're able to actually knock that out pretty quick. So uh, I'm sure that within those one to two weeks, by the time you're done prospecting or you are prospecting, you're able to generate a location or two. How much requ uh, capital is required to start the ATM business? So whenever you start the ATM business, it is required to have a minimum of one to $3,000 to fill up your ATM. Your ATM will cost you 2,700 bucks. And then all other expenses like LLC, tools, all that good stuff is going to add up for another thousand or so. So minimum, you need six to eight thousand dollars to get started with the ATM business if you want to get started on your own. Now, if you decide to invest into programs, uh, if you decided to invest into a mentorship, of course, it might be just a little bit more. But the great thing about starting with a mentorship program is that, of course, you're going to get guided from people, entrepreneurs already like myself that have already been in the business and ultimately going to guide you to help you avoid trial and error, right? Whenever you start on your own, you can start with as little as six to $8,000. But when you start on your own, you're going to have questions. You're going to get stuck in, uh, in play, uh, you know, in spots here and there. And of course, there's really going to be no one that you can fall back on besides Google, YouTube, and all that good stuff. Now, there are in, there is information on Google. There is information on YouTube, but not everything is on YouTube. So if you guys have the opportunity to invest into a mentorship program, I 100% recommend you guys to do that. And that's just because over the course of your uh, journey, over the course of your experience with this business, it's going to be a lot more efficient to start with a mentor along your side than to start on your own. Do you have marketing materials you leave with business owners? Yes. So for everyone that enrolls with my mentorship program, I provide you with over a dozen PDFs that you're able to use for your ATM business and for the businesses that you're working with, marketing material, brochures, uh, posters, stickers, everything that, that you are going to need when it comes to your ATM business, I automatically provide you in my mentorship program. Now, 
for those of you guys that want to start on your own, I would recommend you guys going to like a website like canva.com. In canva.com, you guys can literally make stickers, you can make posters, and you could always create your own signage. You could always create your own marketing material. Um, that's if you want to start on your own. <clears throat> but I do provide that uh, for all of my students. Any more questions, guys? Any more questions? No more questions? All right, guys. Um, if you guys have no more questions, let me go ahead and just give you guys a quick rundown on my mentorship program because I know some of you guys are interested and may have some questions on my mentorship program. So um, hold on. I got another question from Alberto. Do any ATM companies allow for financing or do they require full payment up front? When you buy an ATM, they all require upfront payments, but you could always work with funding or loans from a bank or even a credit card and buy your ATM with the credit card, the funding or the loan and ultimately pay that off in payments. So you could, you could go those two routes. I currently help all of my students with funding. So if you're someone that doesn't have the full capital upfront to get started with the ATM business, I do have funding available and all you need for our funding, you need a 620 minimum credit score, $35,000 in annual income and two year tax return. If you're self-employed, if you're a W2 professional nine to five, you need three months of employment. If you meet those three requirements, guys, you automatically qualify for my funding. Like I said, guys, if you're interested in funding, you if you're interested in credit and a, and a guide for funding, go ahead and come in funding down below and I'll go ahead and send you my funding guide as soon as this live is over. That way you guys can look over it. And if you guys are interested in getting started with our funding team, feel free to book a call. From that guide, there's actually a link to book a call with me and you're going to be able to book a call, ask questions, and ultimately we're going to go over your different funding options and see what works best for you to help you get started with your ATM business. But let's go into my mentorship program. For those of you guys that are interested in the mentorship program, I do have a mentorship program. We have an elite package is the name of the program. And our elite package um, currently comes with a full system to help you start from A to Z. So we provide you an online step-by-step -step course. I provide you a clients only group where only you and my students are part of a group. That's where I'll be contacting everyone as a whole. That's where I will be giving you guys discounts, giving you guys any new offers or anything about the ATM business. I will be contacting you guys through our group. After that, you do get a brand new ATM included. Hios and Halo 2 comes with two year warranty and it is 100% yours. You also will get a brand new internet box included. The only thing you do have to cover for the internet box is a $6.99 for the monthly payments. And that's just kind of like your cell phone payment, right? You got to make the payments to keep the network going. Besides that, you also will get a location agreement. Now, I will actually provide you my contract agreement that I currently use with all of my businesses that I work with. I will provide that for you with my mentorship program. And I will also provide you free unlimited processing. So just like we talked about earlier, guys, you want to go ahead and look for free unlimited processing when it comes to the ATM business. And with my mentorship program, I provide you exactly that. I will also provide you free unlimited mentorship, meaning you guys are literally going to have my cell phone number. You guys are literally going to be able to reach out to me anytime that you want. And I'm going to be there to help you out, guys. No program out there is offering unlimited mentorship like ours, right? So anytime you need any help, although you do got tech support, tech support is only open five days a week, nine to five, right? So if you need help outside of those hours, you will be always, um, you know, you'll be always able to reach out to me, reach out to our processor, reach out to our location finder service, if that's what you want to leverage. And we're going to be there to help you out. We're going to be there to guide you through any problems, any questions, any concerns that you have. Besides that, we're also going to provide you a um, location finder service. Now we have a free unlimited location finder service where ultimately we literally find you locations for a full year. We find you locations for a full year and literally there is no upfront cost. You do not have to pay upfront for every location. A lot of these location finder service uh, services, they charge you a thousand bucks, 1500 bucks per location. We don't charge you a single penny 
per location. Our system is set up a little bit differently. And of course, if you guys are interested in this, I'll give you guys a keyword to comment down below and we're go we'll go ahead and set up a 10 to 15 minute call. Go over more details and ultimately see if we're a great fit for you. But last but not least, we are going to give you ATM programming training, guys. Meaning I am literally going to jump on a one hour call with you, me or a team member, We'll jump on a one hour call with you. We'll walk you through the full step by step on how to program your ATM. So you ultimately start this business all on your own. You operate it on your own and you don't have to worry about depending on third party services because at the end of the day, that is money out of your pocket. If you do contact a third party service, for example, I actually installed an ATM for a client like three weeks ago and for a 30 minute process, I charged them 400 bucks. 400 bucks for a 30 minute process guys. So that's what third party technicians are charging. If you decide to hire someone to program your ATM and install it, right? So at the end of the day, what we do here in this program, we help you start your ATM business as efficiently as possible without you having to go out of pocket and try to hire a third party technician guys. So that is what you get with my elite package for the ATM plug mentorship program if you guys are interested in my mentorship program and you guys would like to set up a quick 10 to 15 minute informational call go over the details go over the different other packages that we have to offer which we do have other packages and ultimately see which is a great fit for you and ultimately if we can help you out go ahead and comment plug down below that's p l u g go ahead and comment plug down below and we'll go ahead and reach out to you Set up a quick 10 to 15 minute informational call and see if we can set you up with our mentorship program. But with that being said, guys, that is pretty much it for tonight's live. I know I said it was going to be a quick one, but we dang near took an hour <laughs> and it's always an hour, guys. It always takes an hour. But guys, I got to give you guys as much information as I can. And, and I can't give you a lot of information. I can't give you a lot of value in 30 minutes. So unfortunately, uh. Well, I guess, unfortunately, but fortunately, this life went for a whole hour. So I know some people had to leave a little bit early. The great thing about these lives, guys, they get recorded. They automatically get posted into our group. So for those of you guys that had to leave early, for those of you guys that had to, um, you know, come or, or came in or uh, came in a little bit late and want to watch the first part, you guys will be able to go to our group and it's going to be recorded right in there for you guys. So you guys can go ahead and take advantage of that. But with that being said, guys, that was pretty much it for our live training tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys gained some value from this. If you guys have any questions, feel free to comment down below. Even if you're watching the replay, I'm watching the live. I'm watching the comments the whole the whole night. Um, so you guys can go ahead and comment. Also, if you guys have any questions, personal questions, whatever the case may be, feel free to send me a message. Also, don't forget to add me as a friend. Don't forget to add our team members as a friend here in the description. And we'll go ahead and help you out as much as we can. But with that being said, guys, I appreciate you guys for tuning into this live training. I hope you guys have a great night and I'll see you guys next Tuesday. Peace.